In Unit 5, there's a Section 4 called Elementary Reactions for AP Chemistry. It is also a topic in other levels of chemistry, but typically it's covered in Unit 5 with the Kinetics chapter in College Level Chemistry. So the first thing I'm going to do is focus on the reaction mechanism terms that are part of this section, and then I'll move on to a table that helps us decide something called molecularity and how we can write a rate law based on molecularity. We used to write rate laws based off of a data table or off of a graph. So these are the key definitions and I'll read them in a, in a little bit. If you wanna pause the video, you can write them down. And then the next part of this is gonna be a table where we can write the rate law based off of what's called the molecularity of an elementary reaction. So we have to define what is an elementary reaction. And then I'll be working through this example problem to keep this as a one page set of notes with hydrogen gas and iodine monochloride turning into hydrogen chloride gas and iodine gas. And the elementary steps that we believe are the mechanism for this reaction. So I'm just gonna quickly go through these terms. A mechanism is just a series of steps by which an overall chemical reaction will occur. If you've covered unit six, like I do with my students, we have done Hess's law. And Hess's law is a really good example of where we have many reactions that we put together to get an overall reaction. And that's what a reaction mechanism is. Each step in the mechanism or each reaction in the mechanism is called the elementary step. There could be these things called intermediates. We'll see them in our practice problem where we form them in one reaction and then they're consumed in another. The one thing that could relate to, but it's different, is redox reactions. They're not considered a reaction mechanism, but the electrons that are produced and consumed. The next is going to be the molecularity of these elementary reactions, and they can be uni, bi, or termolecular. And then finally, there is this one step, one of the elementary reactions, one of these elementary steps, is going to be the rate determining step, and it's going to be the re reaction that's slowest, and it determines the kinetics of the entire reaction. So you can't be really any faster than I always say your fifth runner on a cross country team and that sort of is your rate determining step. All right, next up is how do we write elementary reactions and then the rate laws that can go with them? Because we haven't done that. Usually we need a data table um, or we need a graph to decide what the rate order is. So the first thing is I'm gonna write down different examples of elementary reactions that are uh, possibly unimolecular, bimolecular, and termolecular. So unimolecular is basically just saying I have some A that turns into products. We're not going to worry about what are the products. We're just going to say they make products. Because remember with chemistry, kinetic experiments, we only focus on the reactant disappearing and not the products appearing. The next thing is kind of interesting is what if A collides with another A and then that makes products. Instead of that, even though that's the same chemical, you do not say that it is um, unimolecular. You'd say bimolecular because two of those particles still have to collide. So the word uni means one and bi means two. The other way could be if you had an A plus a B, meaning some other particle that was different and then that makes products. Termolecular is then gonna be, you could even have A plus A plus A. So you have three moles of A colliding instead of just one mole of A. Uh, and that's how the collisions have to happen for it to create products. And that's complicated. That means three A's have to collide all at the same time. And then you could have A plus A plus B would still be termolecular because it has three particles reacting. And then that would make products. And A and B are just arbitrary for some kind of reactants. And then another choice, and there, there's lots of combinations of that one. You could have one A and two Bs. And then another choice would be, what if you had three different types of particles that all had to collide? They were different molecules. A lot of times they'll call them species. So don't, just don't get worried by that. I'm just going to write that down here. A lot of times they'll say reacting species. Usually students think they've entered into like biology world. But chemists will call these species. So it's basically species A, B, and C would all have to collide with the correct orientation, the correct energy, which we talked about in a separate video, for them to create products. And then that would also be termolecular. So if these are the elementary reactions, we can just write the rate law. Remember that usually we would have to have trials in a data table, or we would have the graphs. So you just put A to the one, 
So you use, this is actually where you do use the coefficient, meaning the one, as the order of the reaction. And this only works for elementary reactions. And then K, and then this would be A squared. So that would mean that that is second order in terms of respect to A. And then the next one would be rate, is our rate constant K. And I do talk about these things in a separate video. If you want to put it to the one, sometimes they don't put the ones, but I would. And so it would be overall. So what you'd say is overall, this would be, I'm going to write that kind of below and zoom in. So overall, this would be second order, but it would be first order with respect to A and then to B. So that's kind of a concept that should be in a, you know, in a previous set of notes that you have. And then the next one, I'm actually just going to end up kind of just getting rid of that, but I just want to add that in to tie it into a previous content that we went over, is rate equals, again, the rate constant K, which we'd have to still solve by using um, a trial or a graph. And this would be um, third order, which we really haven't talked about something being third order, but it could be. And then next would be rate equals K. And then A would be second order, and then B would be first order. So again, I'm going to zoom in and just say, okay, well, overall, this would be third order. But you would say something like it's second order with respect to A, and it's first order with respect to B. So I had to kind of write that kind of small, but I'm going to end up erasing it anyway. So again, that's second order with respect to A, first order with respect to B. And normally in the past, we would have to, you know, run a couple experiments and compare the trials or graph the concentration versus time, the natural log versus time, or the inverse versus time of the concentration. Last but not least, you have this last one, which is rate is going to equal K. And again, these are only for elementary steps. And then it's first order with respect to all of them. And then it would be third order overall. So again, we would say this is a third order overall, but first order with respect to each one. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom back out just to kind of see that we have the terms and we have the table. Now we got to move on to an example problem to keep this um, short and sweet to the point. So example problem is going to be this hydrogen gas reacting with iodine monochloride, two moles of it, producing two moles of hydrogen iodide, or sorry, hydrogen chloride gas, you could even call it hydrogen monochloride, and then iodine. Now, most of the time we'd say this is hydrochloric acid, but we're saying it as a gas particle. All right, so I'm going to use orange and show you that we do have something called the intermediate. So the intermediate is a reactant. Okay, so I'm going to pull in one term here uh, above. And if you did Hess's law already, you've actually done this. I'm just going to put a little check mark. You've actually done this with Hess's law. You've, you've actually canceled out an intermediate. So hydrogen iodide is our intermediate. So if they said list the intermediate, you'd say HI, hydrogen monoiodide, or hydrogen iodide. So it's produced in one step and it's consumed in the next. And then what you'll do also then is check that this does give us what's called the overall reaction. So the other thing you want to double check is that do these two elementary steps, do they add up and give us the overall reaction above? And that's one of the requirements for a mechanism to be uh, possible. And I'll cover that in another video with sections 5.7 and 5.8. So I do have a section 5.7 and 5.8 coming. And in those, I'll talk about the. there's two things that you have to have for a reaction mechanism to be possible. The first one is the most important, is that does our overall um, add up to the above? So we have hydrogen comes down. So if you haven't done this yet, you're, these two, there's two moles of it. So you're going to say two moles of iodine monochloride. If you want to put the states of matter, you can. These are gaseous particles. And then arrow. Uh, HCl shows up twice again, so you'd, you'd add this one plus that one. So you have two moles of HCl, and again, we'll say that as gas. And then we have the iodine as a gas. So one of our requirements is that the overall, I'm just going to zoom in. So the overall reaction is a kind of like a summary 
of the, I'm just going to call E E S elementary steps because I ran out of room. Now there is going to be another requirement, but we'll talk about that when we get to 5.7 and 5.8. And that has to do with which one is the slow step, which one is the fast step. So one of these will be labeled as the slow step and one of them will be labeled as the fast step. But at this point, we don't know. But what I'll, you'll see is off on the side, they'll have like parentheses on the left or right and they'll label slow and fast right here. And I don't know which one's which with this one because I didn't want to talk about that in this video, but one of these will be the rate determining step. And then that will be what the rate law is written out after. Okay, what I'm going to do below though really quickly is I'm going to write the rate law for this reaction and for this one. And so I'm just going to erase these right here because I did double check that that worked. Okay. And then what I'm going to do right now is just write the rate law for the step one. Okay, so this would be the rate law that would be for step one. So you'd say rate is equal to K and then the hydrogen to the one and the I, iodine monochloride to the one. And then this would be the rate law for the second step. And one of these will be, if it's a possible mechanism, will be the rate law overall. So it would be HI. But we'll talk about that in a second. And then ICL, and this is like more complicated. This is a intermediate, and we'll talk about how intermediates cannot be involved in the actual um, rate law. So I'm going to come back to this and say that we would actually have to substitute something in um, and that maybe this isn't the uh, right mechanism for this reaction. So in the end, I'm just going to say that let's just keep it as the first one, just as a practice problem, because we'll talk about how intermediates cannot be in the uh, rate law later. So we can just keep the first one saying this one works um, because there aren't any intermediates in the rate law possible uh, for that first uh, step. All right. Well, I hope that helped kind of uh, figure out what elementary reactions are and how they apply to the kinetics chapter and how they're going to relate to sections 5.7 and 5.8.